Hi, thank you for inviting me to talk here at Experience Agile in Portugal. I guess it's in Portugal. Um, we're so distributed now. Is location relevant? Is time relevant? Who knows what time this is being delivered or what time your audience is seeing it? And you don't know what time I'm recording it. But thank you for having me. Uh, when when we, were, we were contacted by the conference organizers, Yolanda, our Scrum Master, said, Dean, they want to have a talk about why safe. I kind of had a smart remark at the point. It says, well, because it works. And she said, well, they're probably going to need more than that, and they'll give you 20 minutes. So I don't usually talk about why it's safe, because I kind of assume the why of safe and talk about the how of safe. But I'm going to talk about the why of safe today in the time box that you've given me. I'm Dean Leffingwell, creator of SAFE. Um, and this, this buddy over here is my little avatar. He reminds me of me at a very young age when I was uh, watching uh, the grainy black and white TV and Sputnik was in the sky. The Russians had launched Sputnik. It was exciting, it was scary, and we were gonna be in space and that was for me. So I became an engineer. Became an aeronautical engineer first, went on to a couple different other kind of uh, disciplines in engineering. I think it's really fun to build systems that have never been built before. And one of the things I love about Agile is it all puts the fun back in it. So let's have a little bit of fun talking about why safe. Four reasons. The number one, I could stop there. It's about the business outcomes, right? We're not doing this to be safe or be agile or be lean or be anything. We're doing it to get better business outcomes. It's about competing in the digital age. Number two, it's about mindset and culture. Mindset and culture is, is the immutable thing that is so hard to achieve. It's so abstract and so difficult to, to inculcate, but it's so critical. It's about the principles and practices, and it's about market leadership. So let's dive right in and talk about the business outcomes first. One of the fun things about our industry, and I think all of you that participate in this and those that are, you know, that, that apply methods and practices and certainly Agile, Agile and SAFE doesn't care what industry you're in. So whether it's, it's, it's aeronautical, automotive, advertising, finance, government, healthcare, medical equipment delivery, telecommunications, um, the CRM systems, uh, uh, ERP systems, no matter what we're building, all industries are now competing in the digital age. All industries need the methods and practices that only Agile can deliver. And we have this chart that we've had for some time that kind of synthesizes the results of, of, the, of, of the why of SAFE, the business results at 30% happier and more motivated employees. I'm gonna talk about that more, because honestly, I think that's the trigger for the others. And honestly, it's the thing I care the most about. Faster time to market. It's, not the toughest one on the block. If you start cutting big systems into small deliverables, you'll be faster in market. Improvements in defect reduction, improvements in quality, and an increase in productivity, which we can all stand. And if we think, by the way, if we're happier and we're more productive and the quality is higher, we're probably gonna to get to market faster and do a better job of work. So case study after case study, our customers reported, and companies like Bosch talk about their build execution is down, deployment duration reduced by 90%, test, dura test duration reduced by 80%. These are huge. These are not 5% changes in an operating model. They're dramatic reductions. And they say that SAFE is now just part of the DNA and it's the culture. It's anchored in our strategy. It's become our standard method for product development. And, th and this is Bosch, so we all love it when a company like Bosch makes cars go better and faster. American Express, right here in the US, organizing around value, teams are happier in general, stated right up front. Increased employee engagement, improved transparency for faster decision making, 30% increased predictability, reduced defect rate. These are real business outcomes. You cannot make these up. You can't get these by just doing an experiment, you know, and, and pretending like, well, we'll measure now so everything will get better. You cannot get reduced defect rates without reducing the defect counts. Lockheed Martin, early on, early safe shop, right? And, and as far back as 2014, they started applying Lockheed Martin to the building of, of, of the F-16 fighter. And I thought, well, we'll be talking about, you know, avionics software, sub, the software subsystem in avionics. And they said, no, it's the fighter. We apply safe to building the, the, the entire vehicle. And you, you just have to take pride in that. PepsiCo, we had PepsiCo in class the other day and they talked about their new stacks.com. Uh, their, their new web venture that in the, in the midst of COVID, people want their snacks at home and they want them safely. So they launched snacks.com and they talked about the ability to do things differently, how they could flex to the challenge. And you see their, their stats, 50 to 60% adoption to 80% adoption of safe. 
feature lead and cycle time reduced 70 percent again you can't make that up it's either fast or it isn't it's about the business outcomes a deutsche bahn i was there a couple years ago and we had a great talk and had a great fun rollout uh, we were talking about infrastructure that was fun when they talk about infrastructure they talk about trains and rails they don't talk about their build infrastructure or their, their development stack. They talk about the real infrastructure that it takes to run a railway. And their lead and tide dropped from 12 months to three to four months. That's why that time to market is probably understated because it's really more like three or four X typically. Greater collaboration amongst teams and better results have raised employee satisfaction again and again and again. Scaled agile and safe is more fun than not scaled agile and safe and, and gives better results and, and happier people. Uh, Global TV down in Brazil, one of Brazil's largest TV production house and broadcasting company. Cost reduction was important to them, and they found that cost reduction. And again, increasing in engagement of the teams involved in customer satisfaction. 20% reduction in cost. It's okay to reduce costs when it isn't people that we're reducing. Again, 24% improvement in employee engagement and 86% improvement in customer sat satisfaction. That's like a double. That's like, we kind of like you too. We think you're pretty awesome. And we think you're amazing and excellent could be on the way. Way to go, Globo TV. By the way, this is a fun video. It talks about PI planning, et cetera. So if you go to the safe.com website and check out the, uh, check out the case studies, you can watch the Globo video. The hardest problem, the longest pole in the tent, and the thing I think about almost every day is about mindset. Culture are the behaviors of the organization. So if you get the mindset right, culture will evolve. It's absolutely critical. I spend much, much of my time with leaders. I talk to them about mindset. I witness mindsets. I try to, try to have a good mindset and project my own. I work with others who have slightly different mindsets and we're always kind of navigating around what is the right mindset for Agile. But it's certainly a mindset of openness. It's a mindset of, it's a, mindset of a positive and growing culture. It's a mindset of it's okay to make a mistake so long as we're within the guardrails. It's a mindset of empowerment. It's a mindset of continuous improvement. And you either live that or you don't. And if you have it, your organization will have it. And if you don't have it as a leader, they won't have it either. Porsche talked about their mindset. And they said that uh, they, they, their, their, their main, one, one of their main achievements was to adopt the underlying values and principles of SAFE. Now that doesn't start with, we practice SAFE. It says, we use the values and principles. And we have one set of roles, responsibilities, and guidelines. So Porsche is giving a, a, a keynote at our upcoming, uh, our upcoming summit this fall. You may want to watch that. They're going to talk about the application of SAFE and the development of uh, uh, the uh, automotive electronics navigation systems. They're also going to talk about the use of AI and how it is with a vehicle with over 100 microprocessors in it. There's not one microprocessor sitting there going, I'll make all the decisions when things go wrong. That data, that large data, that large real-time data gets integrated and gets and gets gets applied to machine learning algorithms that can, de detect uh, that can detect anomalies and make a safer vehicle. All of a sudden we're in the car business. Volvo started out as well. Uh, Volvo appeared, I think, two years ago at our, our summit and did a great talk about their adoption. Um, note here, we have to protect the principles around how we behave as leaders. If we do that right, then SAFE can help us. If we don't do that, then any method will be cumbersome for us or for anybody else. Can SAFE be applied badly? SAFE fail? Absolutely. Anything can be badly applied. Um, can Scrum fail and be applied badly? Absolutely. But the, the trick is to adopt the mindset and principles that, that create the behaviors that you as a leader exhibit so that others follow along. And that gives increased ownership and transparency, um, better prioritization of work, ah, and increased revenue due to prioritization and collaboration with business owners. Revenue is good. If you're Volvo, I can assure you that revenue and profits are a pretty darn good thing. Technically, there are seven core competencies in SAFE, and I'm not covering them all here, but they're structured in a way to be easy to learn. And lean agile leadership is one of those competencies, and it starts with the mindset and principles we discussed, but it also drives us to lead by example and to do organizational change leadership. So, so it's not simply a matter of having a good mindset. We have to, we have to lead with that mindset. We have to worry about queue links and uh, excess work and process and worry about how we do decision making, worry about how to, getting the, how to get the dial right, a decentralized decision making, et cetera. And we have to know how to lead the change. So the context is safe is based around these seven core competencies. And that's kind of your navigation guide, a compensated time to figure out how to adopt safe in your organization.
One of those is continuous learning culture. We call out specifically, culture is part of SAFE. How to think about improving your culture is part of SAFE. Instilling the values and practices, becoming a learning organization. We are a learning organization. I mean, we can you can say what you want about us. I certainly sometimes walk away shaking my head and going, did we really do that? But we are a learning organization and we learn continuously and, and, and we reinforce those learnings through relentless improvement. And we're an innovative culture. I think you've seen that. We're on about the eighth or ninth release of the Scaled Agile Framework. We innovate in our courseware. We move quickly to all, all, all virtual delivery when COVID hit. And we're pretty, pretty capable and pretty innovative. And we never stop learning. We never stop working. We never stop trying. We never stop improving. Recently, it was about version five that we finally got time to start instill, er, installing design thinking in SAFE. And design thinking has been around, well, like a lot of things have been around here for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Design thinking is an entire body of knowledge that teaches you how to know that customer, right, via their persona. It teaches you to think about, you have to understand the problem before you design the solution, and you go through a series of, of divergent and convergent thinking with that double diamond. So design thinking and customer centricity is how we help our customers get closer to their customers, and that's a critical element of SAFE. Principles and practices, the foundation that weathers all, all our storms. SAFE is based on a set of values, principles, and the practices follow. So we'll talk very briefly about how they apply. At Air France KLM, which is fun, they wanted to experiment and demonstrate agile principles and practices across domains. So by empowering each business domain and technical domain, each different context had the same basic principles. And that's really good because you can have people harmonize towards a common view. Safe teams release 20% more effectively than waterfall teams. Safe teams release 17 times in the, in the live environment in seven months, way, way, way higher than before compared to six months previously. 17 times in seven months versus a release in six months. They gain 20% market share in small and medium logistics market alone. Okay, a win in market share, that's meaningful, right? There, there's real money at work here. There's tens and tens of thousands of jobs, maybe hundreds of thousands of jobs at stake that's helped if these companies succeed at their business. I won't go through the principles, but if you take any safe course, you won't miss them. And if you take leading safe, you'll discover that in a two-day course, five hours, of two seven hour days is focused on ec taking an economic view, applying systems thinking, assume variability and preserving options, building incrementally with fast integrated learning cycles, base milestones on objective evidence of working systems, visualize and well lim limit whip, reduce batch sizes, manage queue links. That's kind of principles of product development flow all power packed into one principle. Apply cadence and synchronize with cross domain planning. You've seen PI planning for sure. Um, it came about as follows. We're not on schedule, our plans are off. We need new plans, who should create them? How about the people doing the work? Let's get all of them together for a couple days and let them create new plans. That, that can't possibly work, that's gonna be chaos. Well, these plans aren't any good. Let's try this. Became part of SAFE, has been there ever since. Unlock the intrinsic motivation of knowledge workers. We, we, we come to work like that little kid wanting to make a change, wanting to build, build systems. And we're gonna to have to decentralize decision making or we can't flow. We can't empower people and we can't keep the work flowing. And the one we added most recently, organizing around value and, 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 and a tip of the hat to, to the people that have helped us pioneer the, the way we design the arts and the way we use the team topologies to, to describe how to get organized to minimize the handoffs in the process. So, you know, long live stream aligned teams, feature teams that deliver work, platform teams, uh, enabling teams, as well as, as complicated subsystem teams when they're necessary. Those are all elements of organizing around value. Recently, we've been opining a little bit at the big picture, the why of SAFE, the business agility value stream. This is brand new. You can find this in metrics or the business agility article. And what we've done is lay out a simple to reason about value stream that basically implements a lean startup inside of lean portfolio management. So this is a critical way to do things different, to get away from the thinking about the waterfall model. It's still stepwise, value stream has steps, right? I can't solder a part that hasn't been put in inventory yet. 
So it does have steps, but, but, it, but it's a very fast test of the MVP, quick circles, and then continuous delivery around that. And that new way of working, you can read about each of the chevrons here, each of the steps is unique and fundamental and different than the waterfall way of working and is based upon lean startup thinking, contiguous delivery pipeline, customer centricity, design thinking, uh, DevOps, as well as release on demand. They're all embedded in that business agility value stream. And lastly, let's be honest, customers want to work with market leaders. Market leaders tend to persist. Market leaders tend to use their leadership to good advantage. If you make a decision for your company to adopt a new method, you want it to be a method that lasts. And we become that method at last. In the latest State of Agile report, we're a very large, we're a dominant factor in the industry. Most people that use scale, that, that scale ads are use safe. They use other methods as well, but the dominant player is a scaled Agile framework. And that means as an employer, you can find people that have the right trainings or certifications or right experience sets that speak the same language that you do that don't call an epic a thing that isn't an epic and understand what a user story is because that's all built into safe so that common framework helps enterprises and enterprises like to work together on things like methods practice and infrastructure so that they can put their focus on the thing they need to do best which is solve their customers problem uniquely this is our at a glance picture and we're, we're proud of this for a number of reasons. Uh, um, and, and the upper left corner, we have now trained, not us really, our partners. We have, as you see, around over 400 partners around the world that do our service delivery. We actually don't do that. We do training and we work in Gemba just to make sure we're, we're, we're sharp, but, but our partners do the service delivery. Um, we've, they've trained over 800,000 people. One of the things I'm proud of is that most of those people wouldn't be agile if they hadn't had safe training. Pioneered in some of the largest industries, um, very conservative industries, you know, banking, finance, defense, everywhere around the globe. And as, as, as of this time, about 20,000 companies have adopted SAFE, which means it's pretty high probability that when you join a new company, they'll also be using SAFE, and we've created this standard way of working across the industry. A small thing, not a, okay, it's a small thing from a corporate perspective, it's a big thing personally. Uh, we're part of the 1% Club, and we give 1% of our equity, 1% of our employees' time through a volunteer organization. We also donate 1% of value every year to, to, uh, to the, to the uh, local community and, and the nonprofits, et cetera. And then recently, we've packaged our work in a way that makes it easy to purchase and get value out of everything that we do, whether you're transforming, whether you're growing individually, or whether you're doing safe practice. So thank you very much for your time. I hope that wasn't come, come across as too, too much of a commercial, but I guess it was kind of supposed to be. That's why SAFE works. It's about the outcomes. It's about the mindset. So good luck to you in the field, and I look forward to being together face-to-face -face with some of you someday in the field. Thanks again for inviting me.